Welcome to another Water Wonders. Today we're going to be looking at water quality, Ask the Bugs. It's a simulation of a bioassessment of a stream by sampling aquatic macroinvertebrates. So if you are going to join us with the activity today, you should download um, the handouts and from these links here. Uh, these will also be in the descriptions um, for the recorded video, so look for that in the descriptions. Um, and you'll also need two to three trays filled with water. Things that work really well are um, kind of cooking pans um, or other kind of Tupperware that are a little bit um, broader and maybe not as tall. And then sorting trays, this could be, um, I like to use ice trays, but um, you can also just use um, really anything. You can use uh, cookie sheets or um, anything else like that. Um, and a fishnet will work. If you don't have a fishnet, even a sieve from your kitchen will work as well. Just something to use as a sampler and pull um, small bits out of your water sample. Um, then you also need about 11 different small items. Um, this really can be anything. Um, you look in your office supplies, your craft supplies, and um, maybe even your hardware. So um, uh, examples being paper clips or um, your, your little um, washers that you use with bolts, um, bolts themselves, um, beads, things like that. So just about 11 different ones, and you'll need about 50 or 100 each. Um, even coins, different coins can work too. Um, and then your worksheets and some writing utensil for that. And you'll also want to be working in a place that can get wet. So either on a cookie, large cookie sheets, bring a couple of them for each tray, um, or uh, just put a towel down or a bunch of newspaper down. All right, now that you're set. So this activity is a part of Project WET. Um, it seeks to educate, empower, and act um, as the motto for educating people um, to uh, be stewards of our water in all different kinds of forms that it takes. <clears throat> So they want to reach children, parents, educators, and the community of the world with water education. And that is if you understand it, you'll appreciate it more and then really be compelled to be stewards of, of this precious resource that we have, which is water. Um, so water quality, ask the bugs, um, is really geared for grade six through 12. It'll touch on life science, environmental science, math, and language arts. Um, this project wet curriculum is really um, uh, inner subject um, related. Most of its activities have many different subjects that we'll touch on. And it's not only just science oriented, it will get into more cultural and language arts. Um, as well as um, social studies and some of its activities. So moving on, water quality asks the bugs. We'll be looking at benthic bugs, um, posing as these paper clips, pennies, beads, whatever other small objects you find around your home um, or classroom. And these provide clues to assess stream health using these kind of benthic bugs. Um, you can see in this picture here, this is really what it looks like in the field. You can go out into the stream and um, pull up these bugs and make an assessment. And using this bioassessment, you know, assessing the life of a stream, um, students will learn monitoring techniques in the classroom before, you know, possibly going out and doing some field monitoring. It's, um, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's also slightly complex. So it's really good to um, give them a sense of what it is the purpose of this whole um, bioassessment um, through this kind of in-classroom activity. And and so students will define what a macroinvertebrate is, define um, the 
describe what those are, be able to analyze the relationship between macroinvertebrates and water quality, explain biome assessment, and evaluate water quality using the pollution tolerance index. So this is important for teachers in particular when doing their kind of um, NGSS um, standards correlations. <laughs> So some backgrounds. Oh, I like this quote. The most direct and effective measure of the integrity of a body, water body is the status of its living systems. You know, that's to say, if you really want to know if an ecosystem is healthy, you really just need to look at um, the things that are living there and then make an assessment of them. Do they look to be healthy? Is there good um, diversity? Is there a good number of them living? So bioassessment is um, biological surveys within a watershed. So, um, so really assessing the living life that's within a given area. And then macroinvertebrates are animals without backbone, so um, that are large enough to see without a magnifying glass. So invertebrates are um, things without a backbone. Vertebrates would have a vertebrae and have a backbone. So invertebrates means not having a vertebrae. And macro meaning that you can see them instead of micro, where you might need a microscope to see them. And um, macroinvertebrates are typically benthic, meaning they live on in the, bot in the bottom. Benthic meaning bottom. So usually found in the bottom of the streams, um, bottom of um, the ocean, bottom of intertidal areas. They don't move quickly. They are diverse and differ in their um, stress tolerance, meaning um, they, some are more sensitive to, you know, um, a lot, of, a lot of heat or different variables within their environment, and some are a lot more tolerant and can survive better. So biome assessments of aquatic and macroinvertebrates are really inexpensive, pretty simple, and scientifically valid. And they help to provide benchmarks to aid monitoring and rehabilitation efforts. So they're really used um, pretty extensively to do kind of this first um, swipe assessment of a certain um, area that you want to assess. And for us in water, it's usually um, a stream within a watershed or um, maybe an intertidal zone. Um, this will kind of let you know if the area seems healthy or maybe not. And if it needs, um, if it's not, then you know you can put more efforts to figuring out where that impairment or what is called causing the problem. So you can do more toxicity tests to help identify what that causative agent is. So um, those are a little bit more extensive, a little bit more expensive. So that's why you don't want to just um, start off with these toxicity tests everywhere. You do these more inexpensive, simple um, bioassessments. So you do them by collecting a sample, identifying all your macroinvertebrates, and counting them. And then these metrics, you look at the numerical diversity, meaning how many different types do you find, and their density, or how much of them, what's the quantity of them um, to assess your water quality. And you get an environmental pollution tolerance, or mid ration, um, and a pollution tolerance index. Um, and we'll, you'll understand what that means a little bit more after we finish our activity. Um, so, and it's really good to sample a variety of sites and over time to make a, a good assessment of the area that you, you want to assess. So for this activity, again, if you're going to join us, get all your things ready, um, download your, um, print out your activity sheets, and there's also a, a table to help with the setup. Um, get your trays together um, your area that can get wet, your nets, and your different small items. All right, so first you're going to want to prep your sampling sites, quote unquote sampling sites, which are your trays. Um, you're going to place small objects in your water trays according to this lesson chart, which was in, 
one of the um, links in the download. Um, you don't have to use the same objects that are in the represented by column here. You can change those out to whatever you have on hand, but you just want something different for each of those ma macroinvertebrates to represent each type. Um, <clears throat> and them to be different enough to be differentiated and sorted out easily. And then you need enough of them and um, indicated in the total items. And you don't have to do um, all three sample types. Um, today I'm only gonna sh demonstrate two of these um, stream samples, but um, it does help to do all three. You get a better sense of um, how this um, assessment works and what's the different um, outcomes if you do all three. All right, so this is your other handout. This is where you're um, gonna really notate what um, your macro vertebrate um, is represented by those little objects that you find around your home. And this is what I ended up doing. I um, did to, um, stray from what was on the, the previous table. Um, so this is what we'll see. Um, when we move forward. Um, and this um, gives you a nice picture, a little drawing and an actual picture of what these macroinvertebrates are. So we've often seen a lot of these when we're by a stream side. Most people have seen a dragonfly and snails, maybe some different worms and some other little scurrying things um, in the water. Um, and this would be a great assignment to give to your students or to do on your own is to um, research one of these um, types of macroinvertebrates and um, kind of do a little report on um, what they are, the kind of varieties that are found, and particularly um, those that might be found in Hawaii, um, in Hawaii and our islands. I'm gonna bet they look a little different than what these are. All right, once you have that all set up, as you're gonna have different objects than what's here, um, we're gonna move on to the main activity, and that's to collect with our net, sort using our, for me, our ice cube tray, and then do tabulations with our um, data sheets. I'm going to stop that share, and my apologies, I had that queued up and it went away. And let me get this started for you again. Okay, so here is my setup. And on the right here, you see my binder clips and some different beads. And I have these all in the water. There's some um, large paper clips. Um, and so anything you can find in your house, you can put in there. And here I have a dry example. Um, you don't necessarily have to use water. And here we have thin rubber bands and thick rubber bands and some pennies and this. And so this is sample one and sample two from that table. And again, so anything you can find in your house, um, really peruse um, all kinds of things. You can use straws, cut them up, and use them instead of beads. Another idea is to use twist ties. So there's usually plenty of those um, sitting around, um, and maybe instead of rubber bands. Um, really, again, just look through all your kind of hardware supplies, office supplies, craft supplies. Um, look for just small objects that you have a good amount of, um, that, and just have 11 different kinds. All right on our setup, I do have uh, wet trays here, so I am using a towel underneath. Um, in my setup. And then I also have my fishnet as well as my sorting tray or my ice cube tray. So I'm all ready to begin my sampling. And with the sampling, you'll take your fishnet and, um, or maybe a sieve, 
and you put that into the, about the middle of your sampling stream um, or sample site and then move it all the way forward and scoop out what you get. So in real life, um, like we saw in that picture on the slide, um, you stand in the middle with um, this uh, net and then you'll either let um, the stream kind of flush um, things into your net or you'll walk forward and then you sort you spread out all your sample and you start sorting so here I have I'm sorting out everything really quickly and then counting as I go and labeling um, my counts and I finished that one up and then um, I'm just going to demo really quick how you do this with a dry. You'll see it comes out pretty similarly. Um, but you'll notice um, in the wet, like the beads are floating, where in this one, not as much. So it could introduce a bit of bias into your sampling. So when you do sampling, you do want to do the same sampling technique um, between your different sites. So here again, this one has. Um, rubber bands or the other one doesn't, I'm going to sort them out really quick. Magic of editing, voila, we're all done, everything's sorted and I've counted them. You'll notice sample two has um, more slots filled up than sample one and now we're gonna do our data analysis with this. All right. Oh, back. Um, we're going to get our uh, tablet sheets, okay? We need to get those from your, um, from the downloads that you printed out. Get those ready. And then I will run through them with you. Here we go. So um, you put in your stream number. Um, we did sample one is the first one, the wet one that we did recorded by me um, today. And then we're gonna look at the percent composition of our major groups. So um, putting in our numbers here, we had 19 of our binder um, clips. Um, and as I had um, notated, I'm gonna put in the different types, right? So you're gonna look back on that table you had of the pictures and your representative things. What were the large um, paper clips? Put them, put that number in um, as it relates. Um, our clear beads being 10. And you add that all up. So we had 78 organisms recovered from our sample from um, site number one. And then you want to do a percent composition. So 19 divided by 78. Um, and you get your percent composition. If you wanna do this for younger kids that aren't ready to do um, percentages, you can just do like, this one had more, this one had less, and that kind of more or less is um, kind of base level of understanding quantities. Yep. And um, the sorting is really good for them. It's a good practice as well. Um, and then they can make, you can make really easy um, kind of baseline judgment on this you know there's kind of a lot of just these one types and then not um, very much of anything else right so there's kind of um, a lot of one type represented in, in this site one so then we go on to data sheet two um, stream number one again um, want to notate one who's doing it and your date and then we're going to look at um, group one macroinvertebrates um, we're just going to mark um, where stoneflies present. It doesn't matter how many, but were there any found? So yes, we found stoneflies, mayflies, caddisflies. <clears throat> so we'll say yes, mark, mark, caddisflies. Did we see dobson flies? Go you know, back up. Yes, we saw them. All right. Did we see dragonflies, scuds, and craneflies? Um, here's crane flies, dragon flies, scuds. Yes, to all three of those. Did we see midges and leeches? No leeches and no midges. Did we see pouch snails and tuba form? Tuba X worms. And we did not. Zero and zero. All right, so we. We mark in here the number of checks we have. We have one, two, three, four. 
four checks. And in here we have one, two, three checks. All right, and then there's zero and zero. And then you can see these are kind of weighted. We're going to times them. So how we're going to take four times four. So four plus four plus four plus four equals 16. <clears throat> So this weighting is because these are very intolerant. These are very sensitive. So this gives you um, a higher score. If they're more present, that means your stream is probably more healthy and um, conducive to different life, um, particularly this particular life, than, than the others, right? So it gets a, a bit of a weighted score. Um, three times three, three plus three plus three is nine. And we have zero and zero, right? So then we add this up to 25, and we look at our assessment chart. So it's greater than 23, which indicates potentially excellent water quality. And they say that because, again, it's um, uh, just a bioassessment. The you do more chemical analysis to really dig into whether or not it's good um, water quality. And you'd also want to do several different samples, sites and um, different samples over time to really assess um, how good this bioassessment is. All right, so our water quality assessment is that there's potentially excellent water quality. All right. <clears throat> and then we'd want to do this for stream number two as well. And I already filled in a lot of these. And you remember one, so we only got 40 organisms from that sample, um, less than the first stream um, site. And then if you look here, we didn't have as many um, uh, classes kind of, of macroinvertebrates, the percentage, um, there wasn't um, as many with a high number in this one. We did see more leeches. And if you recall from the other one, there was none. So this was those rubber bands. These here are the thin and then the thick rubber bands. Um, they were not present in stream one. So that's why we didn't get get them. And then I filled the rest in here, right? So we did see um, uh, a greater variety of organisms. Even though there were fewer recovered, there was more variety. So when you add this all up, you actually get a better score. And that's because that kind of diversity does aid in um, and showcasing a, a good, good water quality. So again, our conclusion is we have potentially excellent water quality. So, all right. Our um, assessments are then that from stream one, the stream is healthy. There is, um, a high index number and lots of bugs. In stream two, the stream is also healthy. It has a high index and a fewer quantity of bugs, but a lot more variety than in stream one. And again, uh, you can do all three and that'll give you a better kind of, uh, assessment of how this works, how this whole assessment process works. It'll be a better representation of how this works. Um, and also, as I mentioned, I did one with water and one without so that you could see that um, you can do it both ways, that it'll work. But if you are gonna do um, one type of sampling, you should do the same across because you don't wanna introduce bias. And I'll get into what that is in a bit. So you wanna do your wrap up and, your ex and I'll share some extension activities. So a wrap up, we described our stream based on our sample, right, um, in that previous slide. Um, and then ask yourself, could you do this bioassessment in an actual stream? Um, and yeah, you should be able to. Uh, you might wanna have a different kind of net <laughs> or 
perceive, but even that you could do in a larger stream. You can have just a small um, uh, net and do it in a stream, in particular one that has a lot of books. Um, just a, a larger net is typically used because you have a broader area and you might not be able to capture that many books. <clears throat> And then ask yourself, did our samples accurately reflect the population of macroinvertebrates in our stream? And if you recall, um, we didn't pick up any pennies in stream two, um, even though they were in there. And you're going to kind of can to go over uh, with your students or who um, discuss amongst a friend or share with an adult um, why you think that is. And some things can be um, our sampling technique. Uh, our uh, sample two didn't have any water, although the pennies are probably going to still sit at the bottom because those are heavy. Um, our net, the way that it was structured, it had a kind of a thick ending, so it was going to make it hard to actually scoop up those pennies. Um, other things to think about. Um, uh, is that bias that I mentioned? So bias is um, is that is that you're only going to pick up a certain kind of organism if you use a certain kind of um, sampling technique. So a certain kind of um, fishnet in this example of with the pennies, but then also with the example of water versus not being water in our mock samples is um, those beads float, right? And um, so we probably picked up more beads from site one than we would have in site two um, because those beads weren't floating and easily able to pick up. So that's kind of introducing um, bias, right? Um, and then you want to kind of discuss the difference between accuracy and precision. So um, accuracy is being close to the truth. Um, and um, you usually can do that by having a set standard, um, knowing there is this many um, in this stream, <laughs> and um, then seeing if your sampling technique um, really needs, can find that accuracy, can be true to what is found there. Um, that can be hard to do in a natural setting um, in this kind of assessment, but you could practice that um, in a mock setting and, and try to figure out how you can decrease the bias and be more accurate. Um, precision is how often can you get the same result. <clears throat> so I like to think of accurate precision as a dartboard. Accuracy is hitting the bullet. Precision is being able to um, hit the same spot within that um, dartboard at the same time. So you can be precise, like hitting, you know, towards the 20 at the top and not really hitting the bullseye. So you can be precise without being accurate and you can also be accurate without being precise. So you can kind of hit near the bullseye but not um, them all grouped together. Um, and what you really want to strive for in any kind of scientific analysis is to be accurate and precise and to reduce your bias. Okay, so What's the pros and cons of this type of assessment? So we kind of went through that a lot in our discussion about accuracy and precision, is you can't really um, determine your accuracy very well, and there is a lot of bias that can be introduced um, with um, your sampling techniques. Um, and also, um, one of the cons is that you're not really sure why a stream would be um, unhealthy. You know, what's that causative agent that's making things um, not very tolerant for other life? Um, but the pros are that it's fairly simple to do and it is inexpensive. Um, so that's um, really, uh, it, it needs to be a part of a larger um, plan when you're doing a, a when you're trying to manage a watershed. So this is more your broad stroke kind of assessment and then you can refine down your, um, your analyses. 
um, and really target those areas that are needed. <laughs> so it does help you to um, kind of assess a, a broader area than other techniques. So with that said, um, a way that you can extend this is to research your own local stream and try to conduct a study and write up your sampling plan, do your study, um, look at your results, and then present that to a community group. So that is the water quality, ask the bugs. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you um, uh, we'll go out and at least visit your stream and look for those bugs and see how um, See a new appreciation for those creepy crawlies and how they can really be an asset to how we manage our watersheds um, If you want more information, you can visit our website www.cleanwaterhonolulu.com and projectwet.org will give you more information about the Project Wet curriculum um, there's a lot of really great resources there, um, a lot of free downloadable activity sheets in their store, and they do offer um, trainings for educators, and you can get your curriculum book. They are offering online trainings as well, so you can access that easily on your own time. And thank you for being with me. I hope you'll join us again. Aloha.